Well, knowing what we know now of the affair between Misty Edwards and Kevin Prosh, we have to ask the question, what led to it? You know, what were the things going on in Misty's past that may have drawn her towards Kevin in the first place? Well, we may have some more insight into that now with this interview that has resurfaced. We're going to talk about it here in just a second. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you and reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. Hey, for someone like me, that's kind of my only option. And speaking of that, for those interested, you want to hear my story about how I went blind and how I operate my entire ministry without being able to see. I made a video that explains it all, which I include a link to in the description section of all my videos. So that's there for you. Also, if God puts it on your heart to do so, consider making a generous donation here to my ministry to support what I do. A couple of different ways you could do it. One easy way, just click the super thanks button on the YT video here where you can make a contribution that way. Or you can become a premium member of Not By Sight News. You can join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash News. link in the description. Joining my Patreon, you get all the videos before they ever hit my main YT platform. Also, while you're there, you can comment censorship-free on all videos. You can send me DMs. And a lot of the times, too, I include uh, special links over there to many of these topics we discuss. Some that I got to put over there for obvious reasons. So that's all there for you. A uh, big thank you again to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Well, in order to understand what led to this affair between Misty Edwards and Kevin Prosh, Sometimes we got to go back into the past and we have to see, you know, what was going on at the time. You know, what was, was it a characteristic? There's a certain something about someone that would have drawn you to them in the first place. And now this past interview of Misty Edwards has resurfaced and we can kind of get some of these answers to these questions now. And this interview was done at a time when Misty had just returned back from Jerusalem She'd spent some time over there and she's talking in the interview about how she's now, you know, back full time in Kansas City and she was going to be leading worship again at IHOP KC. And she was talking about, and I'm going to get, there's more with this Israel thing. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But she talks about how when she was over there, she was very inspired by what she saw. She just said there's a sweet spirit there. And, you know, she would love to, you know, kind of do some music based off, you know, the sounds that she heard there. Although she said at the time that, she wasn't working on any uh, specific projects at that point. She was just going to concentrate on, you know, her job leading worship there at IHOP KC. But there was something very off with this interview, which, by the way, I will put a link to here in the description so you can check it out for yourself. She sounded very unsure of herself, uh, not very confident in the way that she was answering many of these questions. And, you know, they got into talking as well about, you know, inspiration. You know, who were some of your inspirations that got you into music? And the first name that she mentions was Kevin Prosh. Now, Misty kind of went on a little bit more here to talk about how Kevin really influenced her when she was a child to get closer to God and to music. You know, she looked up to him in this sense. And isn't it interesting now that all those years later that Kevin seemingly really dragged Misty away from God. Now, you can't put all that responsibility on Kevin. Obviously, Misty made her own choices, right? She chose to get into a relationship with somebody who was still married. And by the way, to, you know, Mike Bickle's own sister. And remember, this went on for years. It wasn't something that was just a quick little fling, which would be bad enough. But no, this went on for a considerable amount of time. She looked up to this guy she was influenced by his music, and then the two of them got together, just like that. Kevin definitely played his role in this, but Misty did as well. And of course, we know that there's another man that Misty was involved with as well, and you know, many of us have speculated that could very well be Mike Bickle, although that hasn't come out yet. But it will, trust me, because what does God do? He always reveals everything. He always reveals everything in the darkness. It, it comes to light in this whole IHOP Casey situation. That's what we've seen happen. That's what we've seen take place. Now, getting back to Israel, because I said I was going to do this. It was interesting here that she was talking about her time spent over there because we know now that in recent weeks, 
Misty Edwards, of course, resigned her staff position from IHOP KC. But when she revealed her future plans, she said that she wants to go back to Israel. But not just go back to Israel just for a visit, you know, to see old friends. No, but to get actively involved back in ministry, particularly in prayer rooms in the Holy Land. And this goes back to what I've been saying for so long. These people cannot stay out of the spotlight. They cannot stay out of the ministry. And I'll tell you why. Because for so many of them, it's like a drug. It's like an addiction. It can't be enough for them to just work on their own personal relationship with the Lord. But they need that spotlight. They need their name out there. They need people to continue talking about them. Now, some would say, well, I mean, how could anybody take her seriously after everything that we now know that's come out about her and you know how she's lied about so many things? There are still so many out there that idolize Misty Edwards and Mike Bickle and even Kevin Prosh. And I think they know that no matter how far they have fallen or how much of a wolf they may be, there are still a considerable amount of people out there that view them as these holy entities that can do no wrong, right? We love the music. Oh, it's such, she has such a good voice and everything. I look at it like this. She's trying to run away to Israel to try and escape all that's now come out about her and, and probably what still will come out. But you can't run from God. You can't go skipping around the world and going from this country to that and hoping that all these things are going to go away and get brushed under the rug. It just doesn't happen. Misty Edwards is disqualified from ministry. She has no business being in it. And I know that she had a lot of negative influence. Don't get me wrong. I understand that. I understand the Bickle influence. I understand the IHOP KC influence. All the negative influences. I understand it. But at the end of the day, she still made choices. And there are consequences for those actions. And I do not think in any way... She should be put right back into ministry, leading worship or, or participating and leading in prayer rooms, whatever the case. This is somebody who needs to focus on her own relationship with the Lord, getting herself right, getting her heart right, not getting back involved in ministry again. And again, if you if you watch this interview that she, she gave and talking about Kevin Prosh, you know, this is, you know, childhood crush maybe, you know, I don't know, but look. He obviously influenced or inspired her. And then when the two of them got together, oh, they got together, right? And of course, then we know about the blackmail. Then that thing turned sour, although she still calls Kevin a friend to this day, despite, you know, all that he's doing with the blackmail and, you know, the, the coercion. He got her to, you know, come back and live with her again. So it's just, it's such a mess. And what it really is, is it's a stain on the church as a whole. But let me tell you this. This is important to note that the church is not a building at the end of the day, right? Church is the body. And no matter what happens in the church, no matter what happens with these leaders, at the end of the day, God never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He's the only one that you can put your full faith and trust in, no matter what situation it is that you face. And I think that through all of this exposure, that's exactly what God is trying to show us. That even in the midst of all the turmoil and the disappointment and those who put their trust in leaders. Yeah, maybe they shouldn't have, but you know what? It's showing people now that we have to be able to learn to rely on the Holy Spirit. The use of discernment, which I think is one of the greatest gifts that you can have as a believer, is that discernment of the Holy Spirit. You know, how to tell whether or not somebody is, is false or not. Remember, the Bible says that we'll know people by their fruits. You know, we got we to gotta have some good fruit inspectors here in these last days because I'll tell you what, there's going to be a lot more of the wolves that are going to be exposed. And so as believers, we got we to gotta be ready to check that fruit. There ain't nothing wrong with that. It's good to do that. You don't want to fall into the wrong hands. You don't want to be seduced by lying spirits. I mean, these are all things that are very, very relevant today in the church. Christians face this on a daily basis. So again, I'll put some more information for you here in the description. You can check out that interview. Let me know your thoughts. What I want to do right now, something I do on all of these videos, and that's end this video on hope. This is part of my ministry outreach. What this is, is an altar call 
I've been doing this on my videos ever since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing here in the church and you know, exposing the wolves and all the shenanigans, we always want to point people to Jesus because we're in the last days. He's coming soon. This world is full of chaos and we're trying to get people to the Lord in this hour. So for anybody watching right now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer that you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and you ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews, link in the description, or just hit the super thanks button on the YT video here. That's how you can contribute that way. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.